focus today will be uh, on the chakras okay and i'm going to explain what they are and what they do chakras are the energy points of the body now the same way that you have your main organs your brain your uh, jaw mouth throat heart uh, digestive system and the bowels your soul also has main organs called the chakras now those are crown third eye throat heart solar plexus sacral underneath the navel and then you have the root chakra which is at the bottom of the spine now each of those chakras have a responsibility the same way that your brain has a responsibility your throat has a responsibility your heart has one so each of those chakras are responsible for one your emotional aspect of your body and a physical aspect of your body now the emotional aspect is perhaps um more um active in in chakra management or chakra responsibility because your body is mainly responsible for your physical aspect so now let's go further and one by one and then i'm going to tell you what foods are good for your chakras <clears throat> so you can write them down uh, if you're interested now the first thing is your crown chakra okay now in in hinduism and ayurvedic medicine and the chakra system they always start with the root chakra first at the bottom of your spine and the idea is that you are uh, a, a physical being connected to the earth so you start off with the root chakra however um i believe and there's um, I think that a lot of people would support that, that we are more spiritual beings than human beings. So I like to start with the crown chakra. So the crown chakra is responsible for your connection to the divine, to God, to the universe. Whatever people call it, there's more than one way to the truth. So it's your connection to the spiritual world. Now this chakra is, um, is really what sets us apart from the rest of the animal kingdom because the animals are born and they live on instinct. They eat, they sleep, they poop, and that's it, right? However, us, when we are born, as uh, the, the minute we understand our own limitations on this planet, the minute we understand that we have an expiration date, we start to wonder, where do we come from? Where are we going? Why are we here? And since the beginning of time of humans have existed, we have asked those questions. In fact, we have uh, drawings, carvings in, in caves uh, where the cavemen would draw uh, symbols and questions and even uh, alien uh, and spaceships uh, pictures. So we know that we have always been um, curious as, as creatures as, as who we are and where we're going and where do we come from. And this crown chakra is, is really responsible for that aspect. Now, if the crown chakra is open, activated, and the energy is running through it smoothly, then you are more than likely um, a person that is um, uh, close to their spirit, a humble, um, who understands that this life um, is temporary, so you don't cling on to it, and you live in a way that is good for the soul, good for the spirit. So that's the crown chakra. Now, foods associated uh, with the crown chakra are things like uh, herbal teas, okay, like turmeric. Um, you've got uh, aloe vera or water is, is one big one. Water for the crown chakra. Oh my God, it's amazing. And lavender. So next one is your third eye. Your third eye is responsible for uh, your psychic abilities. Now, we always think we're not psychic or a very few of us in on the planet are psychic, but actually we are all psychic. How many times did you think about someone and they rang you out of the blue or you bumped into them? right you knew they were coming that was your psychic abilities your third eye telling you hey this person's about to walk back into your life how many times did you have that gut feeling that intuition that something bad was going to happen and then you didn't go and you didn't do it and something bad did happen or how many times do you tell yourself ah the weather looks good 
it's not gonna rain and you go out and it rains but you knew it was gonna rain right these are tiny little examples uh, especially if you live in Ireland. Uh, these are tiny little examples that we are a little bit psychic. We have this psychic connection to other people. We have this to other animals. And uh, we, have, we also have them to plants. Now, the first time I realized um, we have that connection with plants was actually four years ago. Um, I'm going to tell you this crazy story and I don't think anyone's going to believe me, but I'm going to tell it to you anyway. Um, I went and I bought a um, Christmas tree, a live Christmas tree. It was about yay high, about maybe four foot. It was tiny. And uh, I never had a real Christmas tree before ever. My mother would always have fake Christmas trees at home. When I moved out and I had my own place, I would also have fake Christmas trees. So that's the first time I had a live Christmas tree and I was delighted myself. I bought it, I bought it home, I decorated. I sat down next to it and I was admiring my work. And I got this overwhelming feeling of this tree saying to me, it is hot in here. I'm going to die. Please take me outside. And I sat there and I was staring at it and I thought, that is my mind talking to me. And it was like, no, I'm hot in here. I'm going to die. Take me outside. So I took my phone out and I Googled it. Can Christmas trees stay in the house? And apparently they can't. They don't. They die inside. You only should bring them in for a very short period of time uh, for Christmas and then take them out again. And you can't put them straight out. You have to put them in the shed first to reclimatize them to outside. But I didn't know that. So I thought, oh my God, this tree is gonna die. And the heating was on, the fire was on. It was, hot. I'm Middle Eastern, it was hot in here. So I went outside and I dug a hole and I, and I, and I put the tree in the garden. It still lives there. And as I planted it and I was walking away, and I just heard, thank you, that's better. And that was my first experience of, oh my God, we are actually able to communicate to a certain extent with everything around us. And I suppose the third eye is that connection, is that connection to our intuition, it's our connection to our psychic abilities. And just like uh, how a radio tunes in to a, a certain frequencies in order to catch the frequency we are similar to that now if a telly is not um tuned is the telly broken no the telly is not broken you you if you buy a new telly it, it will do the same thing the telly is not broken we just need to tune it so it reaches the frequency that we need in order to watch television on it and us humans are very similar to that. We need to fine tune in such a way that we can connect to other beings and to uh, other people and other animals. Now, I have to tell you, that's the only time it ever happened. Ever since then, I've been sitting around all the plants and all the trees going, go on, say something to me, go on, just one word. It hasn't happened, but the fact that it did, and that one time, it really did show me that it, the possibility of us living on a frequency where we can uh, resonate and understand other creatures is absolutely possible. There is a woman um, that actually talks to animals, and I can't remember her name, but if you type in uh, the woman that uh, talks to animals, it actually comes up on YouTube and it's an hour long documentary. And she does, she communicates with animals very quickly. And what she says she does is she, she forms a mental picture in her head and then she sends the picture to the animal and the animal will send a picture back and she puts them into words. And so she's invited all over the world to go into zoos and uh, to sanctuaries with animals that are having difficulties um, cohabiting with other animals or they're just in distress or they don't understand what's wrong with them. She goes in and she gives you a full breakdown of what, what that animal's gone through in their whole life and what pain they're feeling and what their issue is. So there are people on earth that actually do speak to animals in, in such a way that they can fine tune the frequency and, and completely understand understand them so there is a there is a cat there i did say we have a, <laughs> we might get one to visit us um so this is shakti <laughs> and uh now now going uh to our next uh, chakra which is the throat chakra oh sorry the foods associated with your third eye are aubergines 
purple carrots and um, uh, grapes, blueberries and uh, purple uh, cabbage. Now, if anyone's interested in this table, I will send it to you after this. Please text me or email me um, and I will send it on to you. The throat chakra. The throat chakra is responsible for your speech. It's responsible for allowing you to speak, not just coherently, but in a way that you feel and want to be understood. And when the throat chakra is blocked, and what we found is either somebody doesn't talk is buries their feelings deep inside or if it's overactive there's too much energy flowing through it was disaligned um then what you might find is they talk too much and they talk out of line or they talk nonsense and they make no sense whatsoever um the throat chakra is important especially when it comes to communications with everybody around you and, and i'm not just talking about people but also yourself conversations with yourself how honest are you with yourself so when i was about 14 i um i was out uh, i was going into a shop with my dad and uh, there was a there's a gentleman sitting outside the shop and he was playing music and i just thought it was the best music ever it was so lovely and i ended up talking to him while my dad was in the shop and he told me he was 80 years old and he looked about 30 and i said to him what is the what is the secret to staying young? And he said, be honest, always be honest. And to this day, I think he lied to me. He was so young, but to be 80 and to look like you're 30 was just crazy to me. And I never forget that. The secret to staying young is to be honest. So when I talk about the, uh, the, the throat chakra, the best way to keep this open is by honesty is honesty to yourself as well know your own weaknesses know your own strengths and be honest about them to yourself so foods associated with uh, with that is lemon uh, blackberry and coconuts and green tea so now perhaps for me the most important chakra of all the heart chakra the heart chakra is your connection to love and love is not an emotion uh, between two people love is a uh, way of living and a way of treating and the way of seeing everything the earth the creatures yourself the planet itself everything now that's love love is not between two people now the heart chakra is responsible for that kind of love and when we eat a vegan diet it truly comes from compassion we eat a vegan diet it truly is watering the seed of compassion and in buddhism when you when you water the seed of compassion it is the first step to enlightenment it is the first step to becoming a buddha is watering the seed of compassion so when you eat a vegan diet what you're really doing is watering the seed of this compassion in here so what happens then the love grows so not only do you love people yourself but you love the environment you start to connect with the animals there is a deep sense of unity uh, in the heart chakra when it's activated because we buy out by now we all know if one country in the world gets sick we all get sick right unity we know that when one country is affected in war we will all be affected unity we know that when the animals are in pain we will suffer as well we will suffer maybe not in the same way but we will suffer regardless I gave an example of this in my last talk and it was we might cause uh, pain and death to a pig and then we might eat the meat and what we have then a heart attack because of too much animal protein right so that's how we suffer we suffer through disease when we consume animal uh, con uh, consumption so 
when one of us, one of us, only one of us on this planet suffers, we all suffer. And so when we try to live in such a way that we decrease the amount of suffering that we cause as an individual, because that's, that's the only thing we can control. We can, I can't control what you do. I can only control myself. So if I control and say my other half, he also controls and say my friends do. Now we have a few people that are controlling their, their, the amount of suffering that they are inflicting on the planet and the creatures within it. So that creates a wave of unity, a way of love, a way of compassion. We start to water the seed of compassion within us. So foods associated with the heart chakra are broccoli, my favorite, my favorite vegetable. I love broccoli. Broccoli, kale, celery, avocados, and kiwis. Now let's go down to the solar plexus. The solar plexus is right underneath at the heart, right here. The solar plexus is the governor of your emotions. It is uh, got the, 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 the body that governs all of good and bad, your anger, your happiness, your sadness, your joyness, everything. It, it governs everything. Now the solar plexus also has another uh, important role and that is how creative you are to so your creativity. Now I have a yoga student who recently wanted to be a bit more creative. So we did lots of meditation on the solar plexus. We visualized the color of the solar plexus, which is yellow and how it will flourish. And after the meditation, he said, I went home and I wrote a song. And so, you know, it, it really works. You want to be a bit more creative, meditate on the solar plexus, eat foods that are good for the solar plexus, which I'm going to give you in a minute. So the solar plexus is, is, is really what keeps us fulfilled because I believe that as much as we are spiritual beings on this planet and uh, we have a purpose, but I genuinely believe that our purpose as a, as a whole in, on this planet is to create. Whether that is creating art, creating music, creating homes, creating babies, creating friendships. But we are here to create. And when we are creative, we are our best selves. Now, creativity comes in so many ways, okay? You don't have to be an art artist. You don't have to be a musician. You don't have to draw, okay? Creativity comes in so many ways. It could be gardening. It could be the way you fold your towels, how you color code your clothes, how you put on your makeup, how you design a website. It doesn't matter, but creativity comes in many, many different ways. So if you're sitting there saying to yourself, I am not creative at all. I have no creative bone in my body. Then think about the last time you were cleaning the kitchen and you were very particular about how you wanted your cups and your plates to be, that's creativity. When you decorated your bedroom, when you made your uh, your uh, bed in the morning and you like it a certain way, that's creativity. So we are all to a certain extent creative, some more than others, but we are, we're here to create. The solar plexus is also responsible for, for your emotions, as I said. Now we're gonna go into that a little bit. The solar plexus, think about it like a bed of sea, okay? And the solar plexus holds the water. Now, in the bed of seeds, you have anger, you have happiness, you have envy, you have jealousy, you have all the emotions. Now, whatever you allow yourself to rise, that is the seed that gets watered. So if you allow yourself to be continuously angry, the seed of anger is now getting watered. And what happens when the seed gets watered? It grows. It grows. It turns big. It turns noticeable. It takes over. It takes all the nutrition from the other seeds of the soil so nothing else can grow. But if you feed, if you water happiness, the same thing happens. Now, the solar plexus, when not aligned or not receiving its energy, um, 
or when it's blocked, um, what happens is your emotions are out of control. You're not in control of your emotions. And when we are not in control of our emotions, we live on a roller coaster. We are constantly up and down, up and down, up and down. So to control our emotions, um, what do we do? To control the governor of our emotions, how do we control which seed gets watered? And it, the answer is really simple, meditation. If you're dedicating 20 minutes a day to meditating, and I'm going to tell you how it works. I mean, sitting still, thinking of nothing, how does that work with my emotions? I'm going to go into that. But if you meditate 20 minutes a day, that's perfect. And if you're busy, meditate for an hour. Okay? If you're busy, meditate for an hour. Now, let me tell you, when you sit there and you think to yourself, I'm going to focus on my breath. So you breathe, you breathe, one or two breaths go past and then it's like, boom, there's a thought and the thought is about dinner tomorrow and what am I going to wear or whatever. You have to say to yourself, I'm thinking and I'm aware that I'm thinking and you bring your focus back to your breath. Now, what you did there was you told your mind, uh -uh, you are not doing what you want. I'm going to control you. You are not about to go haywire. So next time your mind jumps to another thought, you say, no, 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 come back to the breath. Come back to the breath. And you do this over and again and again and again. So next time you're washing the dishes and you remember, remember something that happened 10 years ago that really upset you, you say to yourself, no, I'm not doing this brain. Come back. And you bring your focus back to washing the dishes. And that's called mindfulness. You're being mindful, being in the moment. You're doing the dishes. You're enjoying the warm water on your skin. And that's that. Now you could be walking, you could be driving, you could even be in a conversation with someone and your mind starts to wonder, no, bring it back. I'm in this conversation. This is what we're doing. And you tell the mind, this is what we're doing. So that is how you control your emotions. And that is how you control which seed gets watered. 20 minutes a day is ideal. But if you're busy, do it for an hour. Now, if you want to learn how to meditate, you can visit my website, click on articles, and then scroll down to how to meditate. Um, or, or you can um, give me a call if you want to go through it. I do teach meditation, but it's based on uh, Buddhist teaching. So if you want to learn um, the Buddhist way of, of meditation, please do get in touch. And uh, I'll go through with you and we can, we can make a plan of how to meditate. Uh, every day and and you stick with that plan um which is really straightforward um uh the solar plexus foods so i'm going to tell you them now solar plexus banana pineapple lemon and uh, okay so next chakra is your sacral chakra just below the navel now this is a beautiful chakra if you're a mother okay so if you're here and you're a mother or a father this is the this is the chakra that is the most beautiful it is the connection to your child no matter where they are especially if you're a mother you always know right here in the gut right when something's wrong with your child now i could be on the other side of the planet if i'm very very upset or i'm hurt my mother will call me so what's wrong she'll know right because that connection right here in the room doesn't go away that's the sacral chakra now that it's not the only connection the sacral chakra is responsible for um your sexual energy so your your connection with your partner your romance intimacy it's also responsible for um your, your confidence your self-esteem and most of all the reproductive organs so that this uh, chakra is really the intimate part you had the you had the heart chakra which is love but it's not love to just one person that's a sacral job sacral chakra so this is where your intimacy is this is where your connection is to your children to your partner and if if you are in a in a situation where you are not connecting with your partner you are not connecting with your child especially if they're adults um, meditation on the sacral chakra is so helpful 
because it creates that uh, that pathway open to create that bond again uh, sacral carrots oranges peaches okay now we go down to the last chakra which is the root chakra the root chakra is responsible for your identity it is your financial emotional and physical security your self-identity who you are what you like as a person what your opinions are it's also responsible for grounding you the earth connects with you through your root chakra it is where you feel the strongest when you're grounded so the root chakra is actually located in a very awkward place sort of at the bottom of the spine all the way down uh, in between the legs and uh, the color of it is red and if you ever feel that you're not grounded you're sort of up in the air and life is stressful whatever change your bed sheets to red bed sheets and go to bed you feel grounded the next day and it really really works or wear wear the color red wear the color red and sit with your feet on the earth allow the electrolytes to go up through the earth and into your feet so the root chakra is your security if you feel vulnerable if you feel like you're all around too thin if you feel that you don't have your financial or emotional security or physical meditate on the root chakra eat chakra foods like beetroots red foods beetroots strawberries uh, pomegranate tomatoes so these are all the red foods are all the ones that nourish and activate the root chakra now if you eat it mindfully with the intention of I am going to activate this particular chakra by eating this food it happens 10 times faster let me tell you why 10 scientists decided to test the human intention to see if it was worth anything so they got two lots of water and the first set of water stayed in the lab the second lot of water was took to a Buddhist monastery and the Buddhist monks were asked pray your intention into the water and so they brought the two lots of water back into the lab and they grew human stem cells and what they found was the water with intention in it grew the human stem cells 10 times faster than the water without both waters came from the same tab they were unaltered but the water where it, it contained the intention of the monks grew the, the human stem cells 10 times faster now this they did this several times i believe it was 11 times and each time the human stem cells were grow faster so the scientists concluded and and this is an actual study you can google it i can send you the link to it if you like uh, they concluded that the human intention is so powerful that it could manipulate particles in the water you are 80% water. Imagine if you set your intention every morning when you woke up. That's a command for 80% of you. Today I'm gonna be happy. Today I'm not gonna be angry. Today I'm gonna be X, Y, Z. That is a command for 80%. 80% of you says, okay, no problem. So all of the chakras, have this beautiful connection to food. They have a beautiful connection to our spirits. They have a beautiful connection to our path in life as human and spiritual being. And when we choose a vegan diet, we choose compassion, we choose health, we choose unity, we choose peace. And we choose to understand and value all of life on this planet we choose less suffering when we choose all of those things what happens is our karma becomes good as well your life gets easier your job gets easier you start to get everything you want 
nothing bothers you because you got your emotions under control. Nothing bothers you. I have seen a lot of people um, come through my doors and, and they've been in very bad situations. I've had um, people who were um, uh, stuck in situations that they couldn't get out of um, in terms of living situations. I've had people have extreme going for extreme poverty and debt collectors knocking on their doors and X, Y, and Z. And I've had people with extreme um, illnesses where they really have no choice but to sit and wait for death. But I've also seen the same people transform on a vegan diet into somebody that was almost unrecognizable. The same people would come back and say, Oh my God, I got what I wanted. I am healthy now. I moved. I got my new house. I'm not stuck anymore. And so many good things. And they fail to see this. And sometimes you think, I can't tell them because it's not the right time. But I can see it. They fail to see the connection between how they choose to live and veganism is not a diet it is a lifestyle but how they choose to live impacts their entire existence you choose compassion you receive compassion you choose peace you receive peace it is all a choice all of it i think i'm gonna stop it there before i bore you to death the rest of it so i'll take some questions if anyone's got one um Sefi, um could you just go over the foods for the um sacrum chakra please yeah sacral so all the orange foods that's carrots oranges uh peaches uh ginger and even walnuts actually walnuts as well oh, thank you no problem. Anyone else? Seppi, uh, I want to know when, where, where did the origins of the chakras originate? Where did it come from, please? Five thousand years ago in Hinduism, in India. The chakra system came from uh, India five thousand years ago. Uh, however, it is used in China and Japan, especially in Japan, for Reiki practice. Uh, that's, uh, that's energy healing, um, Reiki energy healing. Um, and uh, to this date, um, the chakra system has traveled across the whole world. It's actually been used by multiple different religions, multiple different spiritual um, practices. And uh, it's sort of the basis um, for spiritual health in, in in modern days. I mean, I don't think there is a, a yoga class you've been to that hasn't mentioned the chakra um, system or watched a, a spiritual sort of documentary without it being, being mentioned. Um, especially in the new age now that everything is energy, we are only learning that everything is energy. I mean, the moon has the power to move the waves in such a way that it gives us free energy. Like the sea can give us free electricity. Um, so um, we've only just started to find out that everything has a frequency. Um, and so the chakra system has become more valuable to, to I suppose, to scientists and today, today's society because they've just started to find out that uh, everything is based on frequencies. No worries. Anyone else? The, how about the plants feel pain that so many people say and i think the plants can feel something but uh, if you yeah sure so um animals animals uh, uh and ourselves uh what well, we are also animals so animals in general have a nervous system their nervous system is responsible for transporting neurons and electrons and alerting the brain that um, pain is being felt okay um, plants don't have a nervous system, so they can't feel pain because they're just not equipped to feel it, okay? But they do exist and they do talk to each other, um, but they, they don't feel pain. Uh, plants are, they are here as, as, as food, as shelter, um, 
and uh, uh, as uh, pro providing oxygen for, for us, really. Um, but they don't have a nervous system. They cannot biologically feel pain. Oh, I, I've read that um, they communicate with each other through the root system. Yes, that's correct. And um, they can warn other plants um, of dangers, like wildfires and things like that. Oh, I, I, I don't know about wildfires, but I do know that they do communicate with each other, um, mostly about weather uh, aspects of things. And uh, also, it's, um, I think, you need in certain plants you need a male and a female for instance apple trees you need two of them um in order for apple for, for the tree to grow and for you to have apples so in that way they kind of communicate that way that you know to let each other know hey we're here and and exchange whatever needs exchanging